At that time Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, what would you do if you know that you have very little time at hand and you have to express your love to those whom you care to those whom you love I remember when that tragic incident of 9-11 happened when four American Airlines were hijacked when the first was already crashed into one of the World Trade Center buildings those on board on the others knew and some of them even started calling their homes they knew it was their last hour and all that they wanted to tell their beloved ones is I love you I want you to know that I love you perhaps for most of us if at all we come to know that this is our last hour all that we want to do is to spend those last moments with those whom we love. And we just want them to know that we love them. Today, the readings, both the first and the gospel, is a kind of a farewell speech. The first one is truly a farewell speech, where Paul calls the elders of the church of Ephesus. Now he is in Miletus and he calls them. Church of Ephesus is very dear to Paul. He served there for three years and now it's in his last journey. Now he's going to leave them and he's on the way to Jerusalem. And he knows for sure that he may not come back. And with those sentiments, he calls the elders and he speaks to them. He exhorts them. He shares with them his emotions. He shares with them his desire that they would be united with God as he desired, as he came to preach, he said, I've kept nothing away. I've taught you everything. I've given you Christ. And he prays that they may be united together, that they may continue the work that he has started with them. And in the gospel, we have Jesus. Jesus was preparing his disciples before he would be prepared before he could go through his passion and his death and also his resurrection. As it were, it was his last moments with him as he walked the face of the earth. And Jesus is indeed emotional. And therefore, he raises his eyes towards heaven and he prays. It's threefold. First, when Jesus begins to pray, he prays to the Father. He first acknowledges that the relationship that he has with the Father 
He says that all that he has done is to glorify the Father and now the Father is glorifying him through his act. And then he prays for his disciples. And now he prays that these disciples that he presents to the Father are the very gifts given to him by the Father. And he prays that they may be together, that they may be united with him. As he is united with the Father, he prays that these disciples may be united with him. Then finally, Jesus prays that there may be unity among his disciples. That they, may that they may exercise the very ministry that Jesus has entrusted them to do. And in his, ministry, and in his prayer, Jesus expresses that that unity that he is praying for is not just the absence of conflict, but rather that they may have a sense of shared mission, shared purpose. It's to align their life to the purpose that Christ has called them to. Dear friends, we don't know what time holds for us. But every moment is a precious gift for us. A precious gift, an opportunity to share a moment of love. First and foremost with God, our Creator, the one who loves us the most. Every moment is an opportunity to experience His love. His presence in our life. It is also a moment to take that love of God to be shared with whom we love. Sometimes we waste our time in so many trivial things that doesn't matter at all. We fail to recognize the importance of that very moment that we have. We never know. Today Christ invites us invites us first and foremost to recognize the purpose of our time here on earth. Every moment is given for, our, for the mission entrusted to us. And every moment is precious. There's nothing to waste. And secondly, he reminds us that we have a responsibility to, to, to be united with him. The way he was united with the Father. That we are, to call, we are called to be united with him. And finally, to take that love that assurance that we have from Jesus and to share it with those we live. To experience that unity sometimes means to give up our own, our own selfish ideas perhaps. And it is to enrich that very presence of God between us, in a family or in a friendship, among spouses, wherever it is. If we have to find unity, it is only found through Christ. As we offer this sacrifice this morning, let us pray for this gift, that even as Christ prays to the Father, let his prayer come true, that we may always be united with Christ, we may always be truly united with one another. Amen.